Hey everyone, KiraStyle here. Welcome back to Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi. If you haven't seen my first video for this game, uh, you might want to go check that out because I do explain a little bit about what exactly this game is and a little bit about the background and why I'm playing it. So it is completely in Japanese. Uh, I do not speak Japanese. I do know a little bit just from learning it in the past, but I'm very out of practice. So a lot of this comes from translation materials I have looked up from other fans. Today we're going to be playing through story mode with Oichi. She's one of my other favorite characters in this game, and she's also really interesting. So first I'm going to select her here for free play mode, and then we'll talk about her a little bit, and I'll kind of explain her backstory before we get going. So you can see here already, she looks a little bit more unorthodox than what you might think. And that music playing in the background is Oichi's theme. It's very somber, it's really sad. Oichi is the sister of Oda Nobunaga, and in the Basara universe, Nobunaga is the Demon King, so he has a lot of kind of otherworldly demonic powers. So as her as his uh, sister, she also has a lot of these abilities. You'll see that she seems to be possessed by these demons, and her backstory is pretty sad. She's actually a pretty popular character within the Basara universe because of a lot of this. Now, when I first saw Oichi in Basara 3, when I first started playing, uh, she's an unlockable character in this game. I actually didn't think much of her. I thought she looked almost kind of weird because of the way her bangs frame her face, but I did see a lot of fan art about her. But then the first time I encountered her in the story mode and fought against her, I realized, wow, she's really, really cool. And the English version of Basara 3 actually has a really good uh, English voice cast for her. She is uh, cast by Laura Bailey, who does a fantastic job in English as well. So, Oichi is Nobunaga's sister. She was married to Azai Nagamasa, who you can see in the bottom uh, right corner there as her partner in this mode that I have set right now. She and Nagamasa tried to rebel against Nobunaga, and the rebellion ended in failure, and Nobunaga ended up killing her husband, Nagamasa. Then Nobunaga kind of enslaved Oichi into his army and forced her to kind of fight against her will as her inner demons took over. Over time, she became friends with Nobunaga's wife, Nohime, and one of his retainers, a young boy named Ranmaru. However, over time, Oichi started losing control of her powers, and due to partially her own losing control, and partially due to the meddlings of another one of Nobunaga's retainers, uh, Akachi Mitsuhide, who was traitorous to him, kind of manipulated her into killing Nohime and Ranmaru out of a uh, frenzy being taken over by these powers of hers. Then I guess depending on whose route you take in that game, either Akechi Mitsuhide ends up killing Nobunaga or he manipulates or tricks Oichi into killing her brother uh, at Honoji. Then she ends up perishing in the fire that spreads afterwards. In those games she used to fight with a Naginata in addition to her kind of dark powers. She reappears in Sengoku Basara 3, except now she's a shell of her former self. Her husband is dead, her brother is dead, uh, her friends are dead, so she's really depressed and she's almost like a walking corpse where these demonic powers seem to control her almost like she's a puppet. And Nobunaga's remnants, his remaining soldiers, crown her their demon queen and then follow her around and she just kind of wanders the land until she eventually either joins the Eastern or the Western army. She becomes friends with Tsuruhime in Basara 3, so that's a little bit of a kind of good thing for her, but otherwise her stories are really depressing on a whole. But she's, you know, very sweet and very kind when she's not being possessed by her, her inner demons. So this game, Basara 4, is almost like a... kind of like a prequel to the games, so her husband is alive and playable in this game again. He was absent from Basara 3 because he was dead. And so you'll see in her story, uh, a lot of the stuff happens before that, so you get some moments where she does experience some happiness. Her sister-in-law, Maria, is also in this game, and she seems to have a good relationship with her as well. So hopefully things are looking better for poor Ichi here. Let's have a look at some of her uh, weapons. She's really, really fun to play with, and I'll show you as we play with her because her skill set is super fun, and she's probably... She's not my favorite character, because Sakon is my favorite character, but she's a close second, and probably one of my favorite ones to play as. This is her kind of joke weapon. <laughs> as you can see, it changes her demon arms into these... Well, I guess you don't see it on this screen. Into these skeletal arms, which looks really creepy, especially when they sprout from the ground. 
in Basara 3, her joke weapon actually had these demon arms, but they had little hand puppets on them, little plushies, and they were so cute because <laughs> they were just popping out of the ground and mauling people with these puppets. And when they grab Oichi, it's like, they look like their puppets are comforting her. Uh, here's her husband, Nagamasa. He's pretty fun to play, at, play as as well. I don't play him as much. He uses a lot of like Super Sentai poses and explosions and Automatopoeia appear when he attacks with some attacks. He's a little bit tsundere, I think, towards Oichi. This is his joke weapon. It's like a, a sign with like an air traffic controller cone. Pretty funny. I'll play as him a little bit since he's going to be my partner for this round, just because I feel like it's fitting that he plays with his wife. And so this is Oichi. And this is her alternate costume. Almost haunting, almost like a, like a spirit. You can just hear her theme is really beautiful. She also is one of the few characters to have her own like vocal image song as well, sung by her voice actress. So I can e exit free play mode and then we're gonna play story mode with her. So let's play on like a medium difficulty, since she is my second highest character, and she's got a pretty strong weapon, so hopefully things go well. Oh, just listen to that sad music. Nagamasa-sama あ、長政様。お帰りなさい。Alright, so as you can see, most characters uh, during this screen like to wander around on their horse, but Oichi is just wandering here on her own, so it kind of gives that haunting kind of feel. Let's have a look at what stages we have to choose from. Uh, again, I'm going to turn off the roulette system for this playthrough, just because I think it takes away from showing off the characters, so I'll do it. I'll do another playthrough later when I'm actually doing the roulette system. Uh, a lot of nutty things happen using the roulettes. Let's see, do I want to go to this one, amusement park, or the hot pot? Let's go for the hot pot. Alright, so there's a witchy. You see she like comes out of the ground, all possessed. She's just kind of like wobbling there. Let's show off a couple of her moves. She has a really cool moveset. I'll, I'll turn this way so I don't accidentally run into the next cutscene. So she almost looks like she's like possessed like a doll. See if I taunt. She cries, and then the hands come out and comfort her, and then prop her back up. So the cool thing about her moveset is that you can summon these demon arms, 
and once you summon them, they kind of act independently from Oichi, so you can continue to summon other ones and attack while they do things like grab enemies. So this is her kind of neutral one. Arm comes out of the ground, it grabs people, it slams them down to the ground. And you can summon one of these while you do your other attacks. Here's her guard. Hands come out. So I can summon some arms to do this. So hold down the button to kind of make these pools appear between her attacks to add some extra hits. And then I have uh, this attack. And I get thrown into the air. And then I have this one where she grows these wings and lashes out. If I hold the button down, she actually flies a little bit. I can also attack in midair. And then if I do this, like a slam attack, the arm comes out, drags her back to the ground. And then I have this move. laughs there at the end. If you hold this button down, you actually grab a bunch of enemies, and you can suck out the life from them and replenish her health, which is super useful. And I have this one. You create like a pool that gathers enemies for you. And then I have this one, where Oichi kind of unleashes her power, and then it makes these demon hands kind of spawn randomly around her as you walk around. Normally it ends after a certain amount of time, but I have a special inscription equipped on her weapon that makes it so this uh, this uh, occurs indefinitely until I cancel it. So it's pretty useful, I'll just keep it on now for the stage. So we're fighting Hideaki here. Hideaki is kind of a coward, he's kind of a normal guy amongst all these powerful samurai, so he doesn't really know how he fits in because everyone's so strong. Uh, he mostly attacks just by running around and flailing his arms and falling over and apologizing. He has a hot pot on his back, that's his main weapon. He really likes food, mainly hot pot, so some of his attacks involve throwing food around, eating food, and using his hot pot. He's pretty pretty amusing. I'll do a playthrough with Hideaki in the future, because he's another character that's pretty fun. Also, oh, Uichi just kind of walks around like this, but if I break into a sprint, she just kind of gets held by these arms as they kind of drag her around. Oh, and if I attack while I'm moving, I can summon a big arm to kind of lash out in front of me. There he goes! Get him! As you can see, it gets chaotic with all these arms around on the field, but it's super fun. There's like giant drawers of <laughs> vegetables. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I'm getting rolled over by a vegetable. So he's hiding somewhere and eating, so I gotta go find him. Hi. 
just because she's very fun to use with all the arms coming out and lashing out at people. When I first kind of saw her design, I also thought it was strange, but I've taken liking to it. I like these like feather tail things that are coming out from her back. Just causing chaos here. And then on this stage, you'll see there's these guys with like rice balls on their backs, and they're just hucking rice balls at their their friends to heal them. Oh, there he is. Hi, Kiriaki. <laughs> he has like the cartoon runaway animation. Let's see if he's over here. There's a big hot pot room here. Look at all these soldiers celebrating. Here, I'll just crash your party. Don't mind me. Look at these rice ball guys. <laughs> Hucking rice balls at their friends. Hey! Sorry to disturb your meal. <laughs> okay, where'd you go now? Oh, you're just right here. Hey. Hey. Just tossing everyone around like rag dolls. <laughs> oh, to be a demon queen. Well, I forgot to mention this before, but like I said in the previous, in the first couple games, she actually fought with a Naginata in addition to her dark powers. But then, starting from Bazaar Three, she adopted this move set, where she just fights barehanded, and the demon arms just kind of come out and do all the work. Oh, here's... This is Tenkai, he's Hideaki's retainer. He's actually Akechi Mitsuhide in disguise. And he knows that Hideaki is a, a coward, so he basically manipulates him. He also loves to murder. As you can see... <laughs> He's the one pulling the strings behind Hideaki. Yosuya <laughs> Oh, stop guarding, come on. Where'd you come from? 
私はいつも一人なのですそれが人質を信じようきっとうまくいけ一人減ったからお弁当一つ余るよねへへいせえ Wanna see if I can do a double Basar attack. There we go. Oh, they took back my base. Okay, so in this part, there's gonna be three different guys with different colors, and they each have like a different spice. And as you kill them, they'll fill up like this spice meter that affects the taste of the hot pot. So. You see these guys like all stack up on top of each other. There's like, it's like the rice ball guys, and then there's like a guy sprinkling poison into it. Look, he's like he's like using like a pepper shaker to like sprinkle poison into the rice balls. And then when they throw the rice balls, there are poisonous rice balls that get left on the, on the field and you get poisoned if you run over them. <laughs> it's, it's really cute, it's really funny. Let's go take back our base real quick. Well, first I'll defend this one. Oh, my NPCs took care of those guys. Let's go do a double bizarre attack with Nagamasa. Out of my way. There we go. Did you see Oichi's character painting was like the demon arm coming out of the ground? Let's go take care of these guys. Look at that giant hot pot, that looks so good. Looks like I have a lot of the brown spice guys. Looks my demon arms got cancelled out. Here we go. Oh, looks like Hideaki's mad. Our Basara attack on him. I'm hiding under that hot pot. <laughs> I 
I almost feel bad for beating him up, but <laughs> ah, he he hurt me by running into me. Now he's spinning around on his hot pot. That was pretty fun. It's a... Oh. I thought I was gonna have to sell some weapons, but I didn't. <laughs> しいと思うわよ。うん。長政のため、兄のため、あなたは何かしたのかしら。何もしていないのなら、笑わいの逆恨みはおやめなさい。一がしなければいけないこと。何度考えても答えなんて見えないの。Okay, let's see what stages we have to choose from. I'll skip the cutscenes that we've seen before. Kai <laughs> ふん。<laughs> okay. Let's try doing let's try doing sock on stage. This one's kind of a weird one. I don't remember if I know how to do it. So it sounds like Sakon is looking after Mitsunari's castle in his absence, and he's decided to gamble with this intruder, which is us. 
let's show off a few of oops, this is not what I meant to press. Let's show off a few of Nagamasa's attacks while we're here. So Nagamasa, he fights with a lot of like stylish poses and automatopoeia and Super Sentai poses. So you'll see attacks. And afterwards he strikes a pose. He has a few kind of cool attacks like this. Strikes a pose after. Look at this nerd striking all these poses. Like a superhero. So you can use this move to extend his sword and it becomes like a almost like a beam saber. You can throw his shield. Then this is an attack I really like. It looks super stylish. And then you can also charge up his attacks. So the more you charge up, see now his shield is glowing in addition to his sword. And then you can make it so he is also charged up. This move is a shield. And then I can make an explosion. He's pretty fun. Alright, so this is a kind of weird stage where Sakon gambles with us. And it can be a little bit difficult depending on how you're doing it. Alright, so what we're going to do is Sakon is going to gamble with us, and instead of wagering money, we're going to wager our stats. So those five symbols right there represent our different stats. So each base will represent which stat we are wagering. So what we're going to do is when you take over the base, a dice is going to fall, and you need to call whether it's even or whether it's odd. So in the bottom left corner, it will tell us whether we're looking for even or looking for odd. Now, the thing is, it's really hard, and Sakon cheats a little bit, so what we do is, if we can KO him before rolling the dice, uh, then we can actually roll the dice over and over again until he wakes up, which will give us a chance to get the one that we want. So let's see, we want uh, odd numbers, 1, 3, or 5. So let's, oops, before we take over the base, let's take out Sakon. Stop guarding. Sakon, I like I like you, but come on. Okay, he's down. Hopefully he's down long enough. Oh, is he back? Okay, so it's odd. Okay, so I'm not gonna hit the dice by accident so that it... There we go. Well, he runs away, so we'll chase after him. Spaces, a couple stacked on top of each other, so I might have to knock Sakon out a second time. Oh. So this 
time I want an even number for the dice go. Oh no! Okay, I didn't get it. Guess I should have waited for him to wake up and then got him again. So I'm not using my demon random spawn arms move because I don't want them to accidentally hit the dice. Maybe I'll take out one of the bases and then I'll take out the arm. Okay, so I'm looking for odd. Okay, I'll leave it. I want to attack it by accident. Look, I can suck up enemies' health by using this move. Just kind of grab them and soak in their life energy. I'm so bad at guarding and parrying in games. I'm the type of person that just keeps attacking or tries to dodge it instead. If you play Smash Bros with me, I I do not guard. It's just not in my nature. Oh, there's still another base. Come on. I want odd. No. Yes! Just in time. I'm going to just stand there as he waits to run off. Can't actually go into these dark storerooms. Come on, Sakon, you can make it. There you go. Oh, I'm like locked in by these ninjas. Let's take them out. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't knock him out. Let's hope the dice lands on, lands on the right number. Sweet, I'm lucky. I'm normally not a lucky person. I have really bad luck, but once in a while things work out for me. <laughs> okay, so in this part, we're trying to collect the most amount of food, so all the enemy soldiers have been reimagined as being made of food. And I'm competing with Tenkai and 
Hideaki to see who can collect the most before the timer runs out. <laughs> Maybe I can KO one of them too while I'm at it. You guys got destroyed. He's so cool. So stylish. Oh no, he's using his bizarre attack. Just guard and run away. Coward. Help me out, Nakamasa. <laughs> there we go. Nice, I parried it. It's hard to see, but he throws a pair of dice right at the end before he passes out. I'll just weep over his body. So strange, I go through such a joyful, upbeat stage and then you hear all this depressing music. そろえているさらかとか収穫と思わしきは兄様に逆らうなんてすごいのね。噂ではその男を兄様にいえ何でもありませんお忘れください。とても嫌な感じがする。どうして？Let's see what stages we got. Takenaka いちいち叫ぶなやかましい。さあ、天下三兵衛の揃い踏みだ。楽しく行こうか。ステージ is always really funny. Just a bunch of animals hanging out together. Oh, 
清には闇をかける忍び These are the three ninja characters in the game. Okay, who do we want to take down? Well, let's do the animal battle. Shikonosuke's companion that he fights with, and then all the animals here are animals that are used in the character Matsu's attacks, because a lot of her attacks involve using animal friends. I feel kind of bad beating up <laughs> the deer here. As you can see, the other animals are untargetable too, so they just kind of attack. Yes, I am your superior. I sure showed them a bunch of animals. <laughs> so, sell this. Stage choices. Okay, so here's where the paths diverge again. So if I pick this blue one, I'll end up doing Oichi's drama route. She doesn't have an anime route, so there's no red scroll one here. If I pick anything else, it does her normal route, which is called the conquest route. I think I'll do the conquest one because I believe the ending for that one is actually happy for her, and I think Ichi deserves a nice happy ending. This one's pretty depressing. So I will pick one of these. Oh, and so you saw that cutscene with Shingen, the red guy here, riding on two horses. So there's stages throughout this game where there's horses and different characters ride them differently. So for him, if you go up to a horse, it spawns a second horse and then he just stands with one foot on each saddle. Uh, what I'm told is historically, Takeda Shinden, Shingen was a large man and back then Japanese horses were quite small so he actually apparently needed two horses to get around so I think that's where that joke comes from on top of just being being a badass let's do this one let's do Moto Chica stage There's like a secret door here at the front, or at the end of this path, and if you get there within the first like, what, like 30 seconds, 
of the stage, then you can actually pass through it. You can see it's open right there. And if you don't, it closes after those that time has passed. I'm gonna skip it because I want to actually show you the stage. Ow! Oops, I did not mean to do my bizarre attack. There you go. So her bizarre attack, she like sinks into the ground, and then she gets possessed and runs around. So you can see this door is closed now. It's funny because Motochika, this is his pirate ship, and his pirate crew are like a bunch of dudes, dude bros, they call each other Aniki. And there's a lot of traps set around here. <laughs> so taking over the bases disables the traps. Let's get rid of any survivors. Ah, stop hitting me. I'm just trying to activate my random demon arm move. お星様が一つあるじゃねえか。Spikes are getting dangerously close to me. やばくなったらちょっと<笑> So up ahead is Magoichi. She's the leader of a bunch of mercenaries, and she's a certified badass. She fights using firearms, and you can switch between using her machine gun, or her magnum, or her shotgun. And she's got grenades, and like a missile launcher. She is super cool. She has a really cool musical theme. You can barely see anything on the screen here when I'm attacking as a Ouichi because of all this stuff going on. Keep forgetting that I can control my computer partner and ask them to help me. So 
See, I think the coolest thing about Maguichi is that when she runs out of bullets, instead of uh, reloading her guns, she just pulls out another gun and she tosses the other one to the ground, like as if it's useless. So Motochika likes using machinery, so you'll see up ahead he has built like a like a war machine. <laughs> Got a boat on the back. So you can only damage it by attacking its uh, propeller here on the back. Well, thanks, Nagamasa. Nice assist. <laughs> now it's even larger. Oh. We kind of destroy each of these arms. I mean, you can skip the arms and just attack the mouth, I guess. Yeah, I got that one down. An easy way to do this actually is if you do your double Basara attack. Pretty much wipes out the arms altogether. I'll cheat a little bit. Now all the arms are gone. Well, is a pretty, pretty cool badass too. He fights using like a, like a ship anchor that he swings around on a chain. This cute little cheery squad. Like his death pose, he pretends to just walk it off and he takes a couple steps and then he falls over. Uh, uh, uh. No. 
何かしら騒がしいわね。な、長間さん、どうしたのその格好、縛られるのが好みなの？そ、そんなはずはなかろう。一にやられたのだ。急に縛られ転がされ。一が、どういうつもりかしら。わからぬ。もう戦には出ないでくれと。訴えかけてきたかと思えば今度はこれだ考えたくはないが何かよからぬ悪にいやそれどころではない急ぎ戦場に赴かねばはいはい行ってらっしゃい一によろしくねさあ今回の戦いはステージは全てランダムにしてしまったらしい覇王となったかつての青年かさてどんな音色を奏でてくれるかせっかく下した。お尋ね者に近づいています Okay, so this stage here is actually the same one that we just did Morochika's pirate battleship but this time it's being taken over by his rival Motonari so Motonari's kind of assumed command of this pirate ship and changed it to his liking so let's do this one since we just did Morochika's stage you can see Motonari has a ridiculously tall hat So, Motonari is like a scheming tactician, always trying to manipulate other people to meet his ends, and he's a rival of Morochika's. Despite the fact that he's kind of a bad guy, his outfit looks ridiculous. I always think he looks like a Christmas tree. And he also seems to have a fascination with the sun and a Matarazu, so a lot of his stages involve using giant mirrors to basically reflect the sun and create like energy beams to attack you with. So you'll see that on this stage. So you can see he's hijacked all these traps and kind of redesigned them for himself. Ow, I got crushed. Oh darn, I missed the last one. Beams of sunlight that come down towards me tries to incinerate you. I think it's a bonus if you get through his stages without being hit by a single beam of sunlight. Come on, 
Motonari is also one of the characters that doesn't really care about his own troops, so if you play as him, there's like some friendly fire that he can do on them too. He doesn't actually like damage his own troops, but he can like stagger them with his attacks. Those dangerous beams of light. Ow! Okay, I got hit. <笑>傷の一つでも追って帰ってきたなら、断じているさんぞ。道が閉ざされたのは策を通し、こじ開けるまで。我らの悪魔でボーリング。元成様の使命ならいつでも何度でも知れません。分かったわ。天よ。この天空に霧を結び立とう。輝き降り注げ。光の加護。あれ違う。I got animation shield guys that like stack on each other like as if that makes them stronger. Ow. ちょっと、to a giant mirror in the back that he's using. Because apparently that's how sunlight works. Look at his ridiculous outfit. It's like armor on his sleeves are longer than his arms. So. Stop running away. Eat my Basara attack. His musical theme is so haunting. Despite his ridiculous appearance. Praise the sun. <laughs> Dive in after him. Another character I kind of grew to like a little bit more, even though at first I didn't have a good impression on him. Everyone in this game is so good. Everyone in this game is so likable. I kind of disappointed Uichi doesn't have her own stage in this game. She had a really good stage in Basara 3, 
where you keep killing her and she keeps reviving herself like a demon and coming after you. But in this game, because it's a prequel and she hasn't quite turned as crazy, then she doesn't have her own stage. She shares her stage with Maria and Nagamasa. あれは一体どういうつもりだおかげで人頭に立ち損ねるところだったではないかそれでいいの戦場にさえ出なければ長政様も死ななかそう まだ足りないのねもっと尽くさなきゃ手遅れになってしまうの一何流行動 Get lady Well, I guess I have to pick this one. So this is a stage where it's Yukimura and Masamune having a showdown with Nobunaga and I'm basically intruding upon them. Last stage for this normal route. Ichi, Chikagoro no Kisama wa sukoshi karetsu ni sugiru. Naze susunde chuabi ni iku yona mane o suru no da. Datte, Nagamasa sama ga kakurete ite kurenai kara. Ichi ga ganbara nakucha, Nagamasa sama ga kizu tsuite shima wa. Ichi, Kisama. いったい何をお願い長政様一に殺せてね絶対に殺させない負けさせない煩わせない一今度こそ絶対に守ってみせるから So Nobunaga is Oichi's brother, called the Demon King. I'll just, let's just gather them all up together and... Ow. Nagamasa, help me. Ah, things are getting crazy. So right now the the theme song for this game sung by TM Revolution is playing in the background, but because it's copyright it gets not recorded on the game's PlayStation 4 recordings, that's why you probably don't hear any background music right now. It always plays for the last stage you select on your story mode. Ah. Ah. 
Spend my Vasara attack. There goes Yukimura. Oh, and there goes brother. Yay, we did it. Alright, let's watch Ichi's ending. うちのるは夏の夜の儚くも後の名をそうそうこれでいいの一が血にまみれることで長政様を救えるなら一は何だって一もういいもう自分だ一長政様は下がっていて一は長政様に危ない目に遭ってほしくないの長政様の敵は一が全部取り払ってあげるもういいんだ一私は貴様が傷つくことを心よく思いはしない一が傷つく弱いから一が怖くて避けないから Aww. So in that ending, I believe Oichi has been kind of killing in Nagamasa's name because she wants to be useful to him. And so she's been using her demon powers to do so, and then he comforts her and says that he doesn't approve of what she's been doing, but also reassures her that he loves her as well. Which is kind of sweet because almost every other ending Oichi gets in these games is usually very sad and bad for her, so kind of sweet that she finally got something that was a little better. I think if you actually play Nagamasa's story in this game, she actually gets a much more happy ending, so maybe I actually will do a run with Nagamasa later, just for her sake. We'll see. Sell some of these weapons. Oops, and sell some of his. Okay, let's look at our results. So it's summarizing all the stages we've done. The game's ending theme song is being sung in the background, but again, it's copyright, so it doesn't get in the recording. So that's why it probably sounds pretty quiet for you here. How do we do?
一緒にいようねその時代は千年の時を超えて繁栄を極めるのであった Alright, and that's Oichi's conquest or normal ending. So that wasn't that fun. Again, Oichi's one of my favorite characters in the game. Before Basara 4, she was probably my most favorite until, until Sakon became a thing. I think next time, I think I might do Maria's route, because she's really, really fun to play as, and that's the reason why I wasn't using Maria as my computer partner in this game. So, look forward to the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care!